But let's get into the actual preview for week two. And you guys know how I love to do this. Uh, the biggest brand games. Who is going to get the highest ratings this weekend? Well, you do, of course, have Alabama, Texas. That is the easy one, right? We know that that one's going to lead, as far as viewership, to massive brands. It's in that noon window on Fox, which has proven to be a successful time window. Uh, that one's going to be it. After that, I think your second one is going to be Tennessee Pitt on ABC. That is a 2.30 p.m. Central Time kick. I think that that's going to be your next go-to, but we'll see, obviously. Kentucky at Florida, ESPN game, 6 p.m. Central, I believe. Uh, that one, I think, is going to be number three. I could be wrong about that because I think ABC's primetime window, USC at Stanford, that one could because of the number of people that want to see Lincoln Riley face a good team for the first time at USC. It's his first time in a primetime window. Uh so, you know, we'll go on and toss that. We'll we'll make USC at Stanford number three. We'll make Kentucky at Florida number four. And then Baylor at BYU, the late game on ESPN, is going to be the fifth spot here. Uh, the most exciting games, closest games this week. Uh, I, I cannot wait to watch Oregon State and Fresno State. Jake Hayner going up against Chance Nolan. Jonathan Smith and that offense. I uh, heard the guys on Split Zone Duo this week. I think it was Godfrey that was talking about the fact that uh, Oregon State is effectively... Boise State from the late Peterson into Brian Harson years. I mean, that's that's exactly what they've turned into. Uh, and they look fun. Now, Fresno, of course, you got Jeff Tedford back. That looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I think that's going to be an insanely close game. Tennessee at Pitt has the chance to be really exciting. We saw the EPA stuff. If you watch the college football show on Bet US TV, I uh, talked about the fact that Keaton Slovis and Pitt's offense had five times the EPA per pass than they did per run, and yet Pitt ran the ball 62% of the time. If Pitt decides to throw the football here, I think they got a shot because I think Tennessee's run defense is actually pretty good. So, yeah, it's just crazy. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be very interesting. Tennessee could run away with this thing, uh, but we got to see about that defense. we got to see what's going on there. All right, uh, the next close game that I've got here, most exciting game, UTSA at Army. These are the kind of games that can get a little funky. If anybody remembers the Wake Forest Army game last year that went 70-52, to 52, yeah, that's what you can get into in some of these spots. You get a team that can't stop the run. You get a team that can't stop the pass, etc. UTSA, I think, is too athletic for them. But you could this one could get pointsy. Because I, UTSA, I think, can stop the run a little bit. But it, it's been a long time since they've seen anything like what Army's going to throw at them. So this, this could be interesting. And then finally, Houston at Texas Tech. It's a preview of a Big 12 matchup that could be happening as early as next year. And Dana Holgerson, the way that he coached that UTSA game last year or last week, looked like he was just expecting to be able to moonwalk through a game at the Alamo Dome, which leads me to believe that he has been game prepping for Texas Tech because Texas Tech is the only team that beat them in the regular season last year. So I think he wants to go into Texas Tech and get a win. I expect a completely different game plan from Houston this week. Uh, In Texas Tech, of course, Tyler Shuck won the starting job, and he is out of there. Uh, He got injured. Now, it's supposed to be only for two or three weeks, but I think Donovan Smith is probably going to keep that job. But we'll we'll see. We'll see how these things work out. Houston at Texas Tech is going to be another one. Which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose? Very interesting questions, right? Memphis and Navy. Both have the most to gain and the most to lose. They both started off with big losses. Uh, Navy's wasn't so big. It was just the impact of that game because they lost 14-7 to to Delaware at home. Uh, their first eight drives, I believe four of them were like ended in fumbles. I mean, just just not good. Uh, I you Anybody that listened to the show last year knows how much I... I thought of Ty Lavatai, the the quarterback at Navy, but it does not appear to be working for Ken Niamatololo. Uh, and as far as Memphis goes, I mean, Ryan Silverfield, mm, we're going to talk more about the game here in a little bit, um, but it's there's questions on the road for Memphis there. Uh, Iowa, if they lose this game, uh, I think they've got the most to lose against Iowa State. Uh, you've beaten Matt Campbell every time you've played him, but this offense looks so dreadful. I mean, it is so bad. If they lose this game, you have to start wondering when is Kirk Ferentz going to pull the plug on his own son as the OC and quarterbacks coach. Uh, The comments that he made this week were not good. 
because he effectively threw Petrus under the bus. And yet they're still going to roll with Petrus this week as the quarterback. So uh, Houston has the most to gain against Texas Tech. You get through this game, you got a shot at going 12-0. and Now, is it going to be enough to make it to the playoff? Eh, probably not because the schedule's not there. But, I mean, we'll see. You, you don't have a Notre Dame on the schedule like Cincinnati did last year. So if you're going to go undefeated, all you got to do is go on the road and beat Texas Tech. Joey McGuire's first year, just saying, just saying. West Virginia has the most to lose when they face off against Kansas this weekend. Kansas looked good. They looked competent. This is a culture that has been built far quicker than I think anybody thought that they would be under the new coach, Lance Leipold. Of course, came over from Buffalo, but they're, I mean, their quarterback looks awesome. Daniels, uh, he, everything about this team looks so much more organized. And when, and if you, if you, have the chance. Go back, go on YouTube and go watch like the quick clip of the Kansas game last week against Tennessee Tech. And this is a functional football team with some surprising athletes. I'm shocked at how quickly he was able to get this thing turned around. It's not saying that they're going to go 6-6 six and six or anything like that. They still have a long ways to go. But as far as the organization goes of this program, he has gotten that thing turned around quick. West Virginia... You got problems if you lose this game, obviously, uh, because I Neil Brown losing that that game in the way that he did against Pitt. Not to mention this is a big time year because they expected you know some pretty big things, and it's it's been I think this is year four now. Uh, you gotta you gotta start moving forward. You gotta progress. Uh, you gotta progress at some point. South Carolina at Arkansas. Both of these teams have the most to gain with a win this weekend. Uh, because I think they both had around the same uh, win total. If you can, if you can knock that thing out, that would certainly be helpful. You get this one; it's going to get you to that point, I believe, uh, to get that over. Now, moving on from there, uh, the most likely ten-point underdog uh, that is an outright winner. We almost hit again last week with East Carolina. Almost. Now we did hit with Northwestern in Week Zero. Almost got East Carolina last week. Uh, this week, I got Kansas. Plus 13 at West Virginia. That is a sneaky, tricky situation. West Virginia coming off of an emotional loss. Yes, they're going to be at home, but Kansas, very easy to overlook. Very easy to overlook. And then I've got Arizona State plus 11 at Oklahoma State. Uh, Count out Herm Edwards at your own risk. I said this on the Bet U.S. College Football Show. That is still a good coach. I don't know what the situation with the assistants is, but I do know that they brought in some transfers a lot of guys that are willing to fight for him. Obviously, they like him because they transferred there. It's still early in the season. Just saying, like Oklahoma State, they uh, yes, I understand garbage time last week. Central Michigan was able to put up a bunch. Oklahoma State did look good going up 51-15 to 15 early. But eh, this is a different beast. I think Arizona State probably better than Central Michigan, I would assume. But regardless, uh, that's the way it goes. And finally, G5 game of the week this week. I got four of them here. UTSA and Army. Already spent a little bit of time on that. Houston versus Texas Tech. Obviously, Houston is a G5 school. They will be P5, quote-unquote P5, whatever the hell that means anymore. Uh, But Houston versus Texas Tech, uh, that's going to be big for the G5s because that that could determine whether or not Houston ends up in a New Year's Six Bowl. So that could take us a lot away from somebody else. UAB versus Liberty. That could be interesting. Brian Vincent's first big time game. Uh, they did beat Alabama A and M in Week One, fifty nine to nothing. But first big time game for Brian Vincent uh, as head coach at UAB, and that goes up against Hugh Freeze at Liberty. Um, we're going to talk more about this game here in a minute. And then finally, Old Dominion. Uh, excuse me, Old Dominion coming off of a big time win over Virginia Tech at home. They travel to ECU who, of course, is coming off of a heartbreaking last-second loss to NC State. They should have won the game. Two missed kicks, an extra point, and a field goal at the end of the game uh, cost them. They lost 21-20. to How are they going to bounce back against Old Dominion, a team that they should beat, but who, uh, you know, found a way to get it done against Virginia Tech? Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.